Hi, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our very first, yes, our very first uh, Hudson Gives Information Session for 2022. Um, so we are getting started very early here in our Hudson Gives season, uh, but I thought it was important to take uh, the opportunity to share what we've learned from our most recent Hudson Gives. It was just held in May. And to also have a conversation with some of our nonprofits who did really well in this past uh, Hudson Gives cycle and see if we can pick their brains and learn about what uh, they were able to do and how they were able to plan um, and ensure that the event would be successful for them. Um, so uh, joining uh, me this morning uh, is Christine Perez. She is the Director of Development with York Street Project. Hi, Christine. Thank you for joining. Thank and you for having us. Oh, absolutely. And Alan, and Alan, am I saying that correctly? Is it Alan or it's yes. Alan. Yep, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. And he is the founder and executive director for Welcome Home Jersey City. Thank you for joining us and taking time. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate it. Pleasure. Um, everybody who is on with us this morning, you have um, two options. You've got the chat box. And um, basically, you can say hello to everyone. Uh, you know, let us know you're here this morning. This is a webinar, so slightly different from a Zoom. We can't see everyone, um, but you can let us know you're here in the chat box. And then also, um, as we go through the program, there is a Q&A box. So if you want to go ahead and use that, uh, that's probably the best way to submit your questions so that I can then, um, you know, we'll answer, we'll go through them and answer them, and I can check them off as answered, or I can even type in an answer um, as well if I, if I know it immediately, the answer. All right, so that's what we're going to do this morning, and I want to really quickly share the agenda for our morning. So again, welcome. I'm Maria Nieves. I'm president and CEO of the Hudson County Chamber of Commerce, um, and I'm also president of the board of the Hudson Chamber County Hudson County Chamber Foundation, which is the host organization for Hudson Gives. Uh, this morning, we're really quickly going to take a look at what is Hudson Gives for those who are new. And if you've never participated in Hudson Gives, um, go ahead and just, um, if you could perhaps, I think there's a way for you to just raise your hand for a second or let us know in the chat if this is like, you know, you've never done Hudson Gives before. Um, so we're going to do a really quick, you know, definition of what it is so that we all have a base understanding. Then we're gonna cover some key takeaways from Hudson Gives 2021, and some of what we've been able to accomplish in the first three years of the program. I do this because I think it's important for all of you to um, know what the data is and what the data is telling us so that if you're gonna participate next year, you'll have a sense of what to start thinking about, what to start planning for perhaps. Then we're gonna to talk to two successful organizations, as mentioned, Christine from York Street and Alan from Welcome home, Jersey City. I'm also going to conclude then with some important dates to save now for Hudson Gives 2022. Um, and of course, as I mentioned, please use the Q&A box for any questions. Alrighty, if that sounds like a plan, then I'm going to just move on to slide number three. Um, I'm actually going to start with what is a giving day? Um, and I like to explain that a giving day is not Giving Tuesday. So Giving Tuesday, uh, if you are familiar with Giving Tuesday, Giving Tuesday is that Tuesday after Thanksgiving where national there's a movement for nonprofits to fundraise. There is no centralized organizer for Giving Tuesday. And what that means is that if a nonprofit participates in it, they're sort of doing it on their own and every other nonprofit in the country would be doing the same. And all of those nonprofits are trying to raise funds and they're going to send donors back to their individual website or however they have set it up to collect funds for Giving Tuesday. Um, a giving day is very different from that. It's usually organized by a centralized, around a centralized platform or by one organization. Um, it's usually confined to a geographical area. It could be a state, could be a county, could be a city. Um, and there's usually a 24-hour period 
with a competition built in. It is just for nonprofits, so 501c3s. Um, it's usually a digital platform. Um, one digital platform is used. All of the nonprofits are sending donors to that centralized digital platform. And as I said, it's a competition, so there are perhaps fundraising prizes to be won. Usually there's a cash prize pool that incentivizes the nonprofits to go out and fundraise. Um, part of the reason why communities do this is because it brings people together, it encourages collaboration, and it helps to build capacity building for organizations. But I wanna stress, it's not a giving day because there actually is a host organization. That leads us to what is Hudson Gives? So Hudson Gives is the 24 hour online fundraising event and competition for organizations just for Hudson County. And by that, I mean, these are organizations that serve Hudson County, 501c3s that serve Hudson County are eligible to participate. They don't have to be based in Hudson County, they can be based in another part of the state. They could even be based in another state, but as long as they have services here, a chapter here that's providing services, they can participate. Again, it's a completely digital platform. It's one platform, and our platform is called HudsonGives.org. And the host organization, as I mentioned, is the Hudson County Chamber Foundation, which is itself a 501c3. For next year, um, we are really going to be trying very hard to raise from sponsors and other supporters $25,000 in cash that we can use for our prize pool for next year. So you're hearing that here first. I think some of my committee, uh, Christine's part of our steering committee, she's like, all right, if we can raise more, um, great. But this is really where we are trying to be for next year. Uh, so far, and well, actually, I'll get to the metrics in a second for our past Hudson Gives. Um, again, it's not a Giving Tuesday. Our day usually happens in May. And um, I'll share those dates for all of you. There's a reason why we do our day in May. Um, and we really believe that this event is helping to bring Hudson County together. You know, we've uh, engaged an enormous number of people in just three years. So I like to think the word is really getting out there and it's becoming a signature program, I hope, for the county. So um, let's move on to some of the things we learned about Hudson Gives 2021. All right, so some key takeaways that the data has shown us. One of the advantages of having a centralized platform and giving site that all the nonprofits have um, the opportunity to use is that it allows us to collect data and metrics year over year. And so what we have found since we started Hudson Gives in 2019 is that the total amount raised each year has grown four times over. So we started in 2019 raising $127,000. This year, we raised $651,000. And by we, I mean all of the nonprofits who participated raised this money. And then we add the prize pool that we raised to that bucket. And so all that money counts towards what we've raised. Um, the total number of unique donors has also grown three times over. I believe the first year we had 1,200 donors. This past year, we had almost 3,600 donors. So three times over. And then the average amount that nonprofits raised, $6,726. In 2019, that number was about $1,700. So you can see that the amount that nonprofits are actually raising, what is that? That's like almost four times over as well. All right, I see no questions so far. Okay, so moving on. Um, since 2019, nonprofits have raised $1.1 million uh, through Hudson Gives. So think about that. That's $1.1 million that this event has helped to generate. Um, last year in May, we found that donors came from across the country. Um, for some reason, there were a lot of people out of Cheyenne, Wyoming. I have no idea why, who visited our site during our Hudson Gives campaign. So either one of our nonprofits has a connection to Cheyenne or I have no idea. Um, but a lot of the donors came from across Hudson County 
across New Jersey and the tri-state region, um, I was really quite surprised to see that we got donors who were located all across the Eastern seaboard, really. Boston, New York City, Newark, Philadelphia, and Washington, DC. Nationally, there were also a lot of folks out in Los Angeles and out in San Antonio and Texas. Um, and um, you know, I'm really pleased with that. So it's really a grassroots sort of event, but the word is getting out there quite a bit. Um, and let me also just make sure I can see. And this last one is that I said it's an online event. Obviously, there are ways for nonprofits to get offline donations. But I'm really pleased to see that this past year, 95% of donations were made online, which means that our donors and our nonprofits are really getting, in my opinion, I mean, this is how I read it. Maybe Christine and Alan may read it differently. I read it that people are getting really savvy about how to both ask for donations online and how to give it, give them. Would you agree, Christine? Absolutely, absolutely, hundred uh, percent. And then um, in terms of the prize pool, so far through three years, we've been able to give away because of the support of sponsors, $50,000. So if we can raise $25,000, we'll get this number up to 75,000 and in five years, hopefully 100,000. That's sort of you know, a, a, a place I'd like to be with this event. Um, and again, these are cash prizes that, you know, uh, we have a ton of different types of prizes. So those, uh, those nonprofits that, um, Compete, complete some type of challenge, or uh, they might be randomly chosen. And the prizes range in amounts from uh, the lowest is 250. So your nonprofit can literally earn $250 to, I think the largest prize last year was $500. Mm -hmm. We're trying to spread the wealth as much as possible. Um, and then we also introduced uh, the past couple of years, uh, two match minutes. And so we just will set aside you know, a few thousand dollars and every nonprofit can then uh, match their donations up to $25 for one minute. And we do this twice during the giving day. Um, and that's a really great way of spreading the wealth, so to speak. I like to uh, say that in the past two years, we've had at least half the nonprofits who participate win some type of cash prize uh, from the prize pool. Um, you may be asking, what is the cost? There is a cost. You do have to register and pay a registration fee. Um, you know, you also have to put the time in. Uh, but in terms of an actual fee cost, so not counting your staff time, it's $1.20 for every $100 you raise. So at least that piece is very, very cost effective. Um, and we've had a diversity of nonprofits that are reaping the benefits and they have represented all types of causes from arts and culture to education, to um, poverty and hunger, to seniors, to youth, to education. So um, I love the diversity that we're seeing. Um, this is one of the most interesting uh, metrics that we pulled this past year. This is peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, the first box right there. Volunteers helped 32 nonprofits. So let me put this in context. We had 83 nonprofits join us for Hudson Gives this past year. 32 of those nonprofits engaged volunteers who were out there raising funds for their nonprofit. They made a commitment to raise some type of amount, whether it was $100 a person or $250 a person or $500 a person or more. Um, we call those folks peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. 32 nonprofits had peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, and those volunteers raised more than $156,000, which accounts for almost a quarter of the amount of money raised. This is tremendous. I think a tremendous metric because it's really telling me that the nonprofits who have been participating since the start not only are they getting savvy at digital fundraising, but they're learning how to engage volunteers to help them raise those funds. They're amplifying their reach. Uh, they're doing it in a really smart way. The platform that we use makes it really easy to engage peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. I think we're gonna be talking with Christine and Alan very shortly about all of that. Um, my last uh, metric here is donors cover the fees for 88% of the gifts they make. So if you're new to Hudson Gives, you know a donor can get on, they can make a $5 donation. 
the site's going to ask them, you know, it costs 50 cents. Uh, there's a 50 cent fee for your donation or whatever the fee is, I don't remember. Um, do you want to cover that fee? And 88% of the gifts uh, have the fees covered. So that's why it's so incredibly cost effective. So, oop, I didn't mean to do that. Um, I'm going to go here because we're really going to now turn it over to this conversation I really want to have with um, Alan and Christine. So I'm actually going to stop my share so that we're the only folks we can see here. Um, so let's just dive right in. And while uh, we dive in, I'll, I'll check to see if there are any questions that come up in the question box. But let's start with, um, let's start with you, Christine. Uh, your street sure. project finished second this year. Um, and there's a quirk uh, in that. And uh, Jennifer uses on from uh, Friends of the Learning Community Charter School. For everybody who might have been following our leaderboard this year for Hudson Gives, you will notice that the top organization was Friends of the Learning Community Charter School. They were incredibly fortunate to get a $100,000 uh, gift from one donor. So one donor <laughs> took their credit card out and made a hundred thousand dollars. And it was just incredible. And I, uh, you know, congrats over and over and over again to them. Um, that's not typical. Uh, it's not typical for a giving day. Um, who knows if that will ever happen again. Without that gift, they would have raised something like $51,000, which is incredible. Uh, however, York Street raised what seventy thousand dollars. So you right. actually had they not gotten that incredible gift, you would have won the competition for most. Fun Absolutely, games. look, and, and we're not we are not salty about it at all. Okay, <laughs> I just want to go on record saying if I had a one hundred thousand uh, dollar, you know, uh, secret donor, I'd totally be okay with that too. Uh, but yeah, we had. Uh, while we may not have raised the most amount of money, we had the largest number of individual donors donate to our campaign this year. And I definitely think, uh, I think it was really, in, in a way, I think getting that $100,000 could have, and, and you know, it, um, while it was super exciting and it was great, I really hope it didn't take the the wind out of the sails too early in the campaign because you know sometimes when you hit your goals too you, the beauty of the platform though too is you can shift your goal if you need to so we were able to do that uh, a couple of times which was really great but um, so yeah so I think a lot of people are putting in the comments that they want to kind of understand how do you use volunteers yeah. to raise money for this? And I'm gonna tell you, so this year, our winning formula was most definitely found in exactly what you're talking about. And if it's okay, I'm gonna share um, my screen um, and sort of let you guys see a little bit, you know, our, our winning formula in the numbers, if you will, right? So this is a comparison of uh, comparing, you know, we call it fiscal year, but comparing uh, Hudson Gives 2020 to Hudson Gives 2021. And our numbers, Maria, are definitely, you know, the idea that raising four times the amount or having three times the donors, I think we're, we're kind of on par, maybe a little bit more with the money. We had more than four times the money wow. that we had back in 2020. Definitely with the donors, though, um, you know, three times and then and then some. Uh, our average donation jumped up a little bit, and that could have been because we had maybe a few higher, uh, uh, larger donors. But the median donation stays about the same. So it's something to anticipate. Um, you know, fifty dollars is the sweet spot uh, for most donations. But this, to me, is like delicious right here because from 2020 to 2021, we had 50 individuals repeat, you know, they came back, they liked of this 150, 49 of them came back because they saw something great in this particular kind of challenge. So I think that was great. Um, uh, I will say that, you know, we did do some new things in 21 and they fall, Maria, directly what you said. They are the winning formula. Um, these were the incentives. 
So we hosted three individual challenges, if you will. The first one was a donor-based challenge. So we said, hey, we need 200 donors during this period of time. It'll unlock a thousand bucks. And folks jumped in wholeheartedly. So we got our 200 donors and we got that thousand dollar challenge. That was from a board member. We then had a one hour, actually it was two hours really, when we were live as a part of the um, live broadcast. And we were looking for 30 donors as a part of our Peace Ministries power hours. They were, they, they fronted a thousand dollars for us. And we did a two hour drive and we successfully completed that. The last one was the Big Megillah. We sort of saved it again towards the end or the latter part of the day because, you know, there is a trajectory as far as the pattern with which the day runs. And so you kind of want to, I'm not going to say you store it all up for the end, but we did need some incentivization towards the end of the campaign day. And this was a biggie. This was $15,000 that we started uh, after lunchtime towards the latter part of the afternoon. And it went into the evening and it was a nail biter, but we were able to raise so 15,000. So yeah, so let me let me let's start there for a second because I do this this part of your slide right here is is the whole sort of Megillah, if you will. I think is that a phrase I'm using? I don't know. And um, I'm I'm using it. <laughs> you are, you are it. Right, so I'm getting it from you this morning. I can't even like my brain is just like um thinking of everything you're saying and also the questions. So let me let me uh, address some of the questions. There's a question in here about a fee related to peer to peer. There is no fee related to peer to peer fundraising, which we're going to talk about with Christine in a second. And peer to peer fundraising, again, is when I get a volunteer who helps me to raise money. And I say to them, can you raise $250? I make that their goal. So now I'm the person running the whole campaign for, say, an organization like York Street, and my goal is $5,000, but then I get 10 people to help raise $250 each. I've already got, that's $2,500 of my goal, so now all I have to do is raise $2,500. So we call those volunteers who take on a smaller goal, peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. It's built into the platform. There is absolutely no fee to do that. And... Uh, this past year, we saw a tremendous amount of fundraising happening with the peer-to-peer. -peer. We also do provide uh, training for how to use the peer-to-peer. -peer. This piece that you're talking about right here, these challenges are slightly different, but they're also a way to engage volunteers to help you get to your big, your big picture goal. So you had a board member who said, I'm going to give you $1,000, that first one right here, uh, I'm going to give you a thousand dollars if when you hit the 200 donor mark, am I right? And so when you got 200 donors, and those 200 donors could give five dollars each. So sure. you, you might get 200 donors. They give you five dollars each. You raise a thousand dollars. Your board member is then saying, "I'm going to give you a thousand dollars now for getting 200 people engaged." So that's a challenge. That's not a match. It's a challenge. Um, a match is different. A match is for every $5 you get, I'll give you $5. Um, exactly. But these 200 donors, they could have all given you $50, in which case you've raised $10,000 and now you're getting 10%. Um, so that's a challenge. The Peace and Ministry Power Hours was also a challenge because they were saying, we'll give you $1,000. Again, when you, if you get 30 donors in this two hour period that starts from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And I'm kind of thinking that that helps with the lunchtime hour, you know, when people step away from their desk, they wanna help you out with this challenge. So they, they have an incentive to give. And then the final one is a match in that if you raise $15,000, you had $15,000 to match it. So, um, so people understand the differences between challenge and matching. But this was part of your overall strategy between these two challenges and the match. That's seventeen thousand dollars. Yep. Cool. Yeah. No. So that was a, a that was a huge uh, that was a nice big chunk that really helped you know uh, helped us move us over the goal and uh, achieving these or striving to earn or have these in our back pocket. You know these challenge and these match moments definitely uh, was something that we did 
differently this year, but we also, you know, we pre prepared for it. We planned for it. These are incentives for donors to really jump in and participate. And so, you know, part of my work was to say, hey, before we, before we get to this day, would you be interested in or could you and all that kind of good stuff. So I sort of had these teed up and I will say the platform. So using the GiveGap platform, you know, they do the think work. The, all the brain work is done for as long as, you know, if I set up this board member challenge and I need 200 do donors, I can set up the time frames and I can set up all of the limits and all the goodness so that when you log in and you go to our page on the site or our fundraisers uh, to their pages, you will see these challenges listed and, you know, a, a, a needle, if you will, that says, you know, this is how close you are, this is how far you are. So that was what kept the day. It kind of did also, you know, kind of incentivize the peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. But I have to tell you, the peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, this is the, this is the, it's the smallest square on this page, but I'm gonna tell you, it's the biggest story. This is it. This provided us, we went from having 18 individuals out there pounding the pavement for us, you know, not, not literally during 2020, but figuratively, right? We, we more than doubled, right? So we went up to 41 individuals who were out there reaching out to their networks. So during the course of the year, I was working with groups and looking at who could participate in this particular day. And so this 41, you know, this group was comprised of our board of directors. Our, we have, uh, we've, we've really re-engaged a young professionals board and they took this on as a campaign. Mm -hmm. um, they created a whole squad around it. Yeah, um, so that was one group. And then a third was a business networking group that of, uh, of corporate folks that we developed really with intention around this campaign. So, so uh, you know, basically, in a, in a sort of a nutshell, I was able to provide those fundraisers with a toolkit. Now you guys create wonderful toolkits as a part of the, the, the link in the site. But I even went one step further and I really like ninja'd it down and emailed them uh, all of their text, all of their everything. I made it very easy for our fundraisers. I gave them graphics that were specific to York Street. Um, so they had a toolkit with, so we all know that uh, we wish that we could ask people once and they gave but you really do have to over the course of a day, really like engage them at a minimum of four times. Four times is, is still outside of a lot of people's comfort zone, but I explained to people and I gave them tools so that they could send the initial email in letting them know, hey, I'm a fundraiser. This is why I'm raising money and why I want you to support this. A second link, oh, we're gonna host this challenge would you please consider joining it? Then a link with a video that talks about the impact of our mission, who we are and what we do, so that they're you know, more deeply into that. And then finally, um, just updates on the regular of this is, we're so close, won't you, cons won't you please consider sharing this with your networks? And so through email, social media, all that kind of good stuff, it really worked out. So that toolkit, so give them more tools, they'll, they'll help you out. Certainly have more fundraisers, individuals that will raise funds for you and you'll raise more money. And then those incentives really was more uh, donors, more engagement, so right. Right. yeah. Thank you, Christine, this yeah, is awesome. You. I mean, if you can just go back to the first slide for one second, I just wanna show everyone that, again, from 2020 to 2021, this is a, almost a five time increase in the amount raised. And that's because of a two and a half time increase in, in the number of fundraisers, the peer to peer folks who are out there pounding the pavement, shaking the trees, so to speak. Um, and then all the, also those matching grants, which 
you had a lot, but you, you can start small with this. And what I want to then move to, um, because I think this is a good segue, is Alan at Welcome Home Jersey City. Um, Alan, you run a smaller organization, but one of the things I noticed was that you guys were all over Facebook during Hudson Kiss. I kept getting, you know, the messages. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about your strategy yeah. with a smaller well, sure. Well, uh, you know, first of all, thank you, uh, Christine, for your presentation. And I wish I had a, a graphic or infographic to share, uh, but I'm not that well prepared. But I did, I learned so much from uh, what you shared. And it was one of the things that we concluded in our postmortem after Hudson Gives that we wanted to do peer-to-peer -peer fundraising next year, uh, because we now have this sort of critical uh, base of volunteers that we can, you know, I was going to say exploit, but take advantage of. We can ask them to help us uh, in, in this deliberate way. And clearly it worked for you. Uh, you demonstrated that. Um, definitely our, our strategy was around social media. It was around exploiting Facebook, around Instagram, uh, Instagram stories. And it also involved early preparation. Um, so we've kind of been, we're heavy social media users anyhow. Um, we've been building a base of followers and supporters um, really over the years. Um, and things really hit a sort of critical uh, mass this year, I think. Um, and that's demonstrated in our numbers too. We participated in 2019 and we raised $2,300. And in 2020, we raised $3,700. So we thought that a nice incremental goal for this year would be $5,000. And um, I think that's pretty reasonable, but we raised $18,240, right? $18,240, which is five times, you know, what we raised last year. And, you know, I think that's what comes of being deliberate and strategic as opposed to just kind of impulsive and doing ad hoc stuff as best you can the day of. I mean, some people will take a passive approach and, and the yield will reflect that. Um, others will take an active, enthusiastic approach and get better results. And still others will plan well ahead and, and create deliberate campaigns or invite um, volunteers and supporters like Christine did to do peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, you know, you know, sort of contiguously. Um, and so what we did was we came up with a, a few very specific sorts of campaigns. Um, first of all, we, we wanted 100% board participation. Um, and we didn't quite get that, but we almost did. And one of the aspects of that was to ask each of our board members to record a video, um, sort of describing who they are and why they're um, uh, involved with Welcome Home, what it means to them. And so I think we had about, you know, five or six or seven um, board member videos that we broadcast and three or four from other volunteers. And uh, that's a way of uh, engaging um, you know, our, our community and, 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 and uh, letting people know that we're really kind of human, we're, 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 we're real people uh, uh, engaged with our clients. Um, so we personalized things. And we, we had a, a couple other uh, programs, uh, campaigns on the day of, um, including, um, you know, graphics that would describe how much uh, particular amount of donation would would buy, for instance, you know, $10 might buy a certain uh, transportation or $500 might buy a semester's worth of music lessons for, you know, 10 kids. Um, but, um, uh, you know, and then we also had challenges and matches as well, like Christine did. We had a $1,000 uh, challenge from one of our board members to double our donors from last year. In fact, we got 170 donors uh, this year, whereas we had 70 donors the year before. So we, 
easily achieve that um, goal. And then we, we had a, another organization um, volunteer to match donations up to $3,000. And we ran that relatively early in the day um, and, um, and, and hit that goal quickly because we, we were afraid that um, if we did it later in the day, we would have already surpassed our $3,000 goal. And people would think that they didn't need to participate in that particular challenge. But we probably could have done a discreet um, a match, rather, a discreet match outside of the total amount that we already fundraised at that point. Um, so we can rethink that next year. Um, what we did in the week prior uh, to the day of uh, challenge was we, and this speaks to one of the goals of Hudson Gives, and I, and I think it was pretty effective. We work with a lot of other community organizations in Jersey City and Hudson County. And so each day we featured um, another partner organization that was also participating in Hudson Gives. So while, you know, uh, you know the, there's a competitive spirit to this event, um, we tried to emphasize the collaborative spirit and again, emphasize our engagement within the community as a whole. You know, we're not just a group of people um, working to help support folks who are needy. Um, we, you know, one of our goals with our clients is to help integrate them into the community. And we try to do that by introducing them to other organizations that can help them by uh, inviting other organizations to bring their programming to us. And so, you know, we, we featured Nimbus in, on one day, we featured mm -hmm. Team Wilderness on another day. I, I don't have the list in front of me, so I'm not gonna try to be comprehensive, but you know, there were different schools. Um, I think the, the Hudson School was one. And um, you know, that helped to so not only build excitement or momentum towards the, the day of, but, but also to, to, to make a point about ourselves as an organization, um, hopefully make us more attractive to others. So yeah, you know, and, and then I created a lot of content on Facebook, uh, but I wasn't the only player in this. Uh, we had several other volunteers and board members who were involved. We brought on uh, somebody who's now on staff actually to help translate everything that I was doing on Facebook for the 50 something set of mm -hmm. which I'm a part of to do on Instagram for the 20 or 30 something set and to do Instagram stories, which I don't even understand uh, to this day. Um, and, and she did a marvelous job, you know, and I, I, I wish we could quantify the number of people who came to donate based on, you know, where, where they came from, whether it was which channel they came from. Uh, but, you know, Instagram and um, Facebook were both very powerful tools for us. Um, we were encouraged during the training sessions that you all uh, ran uh, ahead of Hudson Gives, you know, to explore YouTube. Um, I can't remember the name of the fellow who uh, ran the social Chris. media session. Yep, Chris Tuttle. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So, did, you ever, um, did you guys do that? I think YouTube is, is, is challenging, but if you can crack that nut. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not sure that we cracked it, but we gave it a shot. You know, we put every type of video that we'd ever, every type of content we'd ever created onto the YouTube channel, including the board member introductions. And uh, we tried to generate, I mean, it, it was incentive for us to do something differently and to expand. And it's, you know, it's gotten me thinking about TikTok is the next, avenue for, uh, I don't know how much the, uh, you know, 12 year old uh, TikTok dancer is going to contribute to our next <laughs> campaign, but, you know, you uh, know. Down the line, <laughs> they're going to have money in their pockets. So, yeah, you know, exactly. yeah um, you know, we, we participated in, in the live hour. I think I was interviewed by Jen Hughes. We, um, we invited our, our, uh, volunteers to post pictures of their pets for the mascot contest. These are all ways of engaging folks uh, online and on social media that I think were pretty effective for us. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was fun. It did, it does take work, as you say, yeah. And yeah. I think, um, 
you know, social media, obviously we've been hearing a lot about Facebook uh, and Instagram in the news lately and, and social media is a double-edged sword. Um, but it's been uh, pretty effective for us as a force for good, in my opinion. Um, not everybody would agree with our cause, but you know, we, we mean well for sure. And, um, and uh, you know, it's, it's really helped us um, achieve things, not only in terms of fundraising, but in terms of growing in volunteers, because uh, we're a very volunteer driven organization and to do advocacy work. Uh, right. Because right. it's not uncontroversial, as we know, working with refugees is not right. uncontroversial, but, but we're able to get our message out there and, and bring information out there, facts, we hope, um, to people who aren't familiar with with right. what we're doing and with with what's going on in the world. Right. And so, you know, what I'm hearing you say, Alan and and Christine, uh, for those who are who are watching, a couple of things. Number one is both of these organizations have participated in all three giving days thus far and have seen an incremental and then in the last year a very significant uptick in the amount of money they've raised. Um, and I think that that speaks to, it takes a couple of years to get your arms around this platform and to really understand the power of Hudson Gibbs. Uh, so for those who are new, you should know that the chamber itself runs a pretty extensive marketing campaign in the months and weeks prior to Hudson Gibbs to get the word out there that the big day is coming. Um, we do this sort of meta, I like to think of it, meta camp marketing campaign in an effort to help all the nonprofits really focus on marketing for their own organization uh, and getting their story out. And to that end, Alan mentioned the training that we've done for the past two years, we hire a social media expert to provide free training to everyone who pays the registration fee. The only fee a nonprofit has to pay is their initial registration fee. And with that, they get access to the platform, they get uh, their own page on the platform, they get access to all the tools, all the toolkit and the training that we provide. So um, we're here to provide support, but you know, you've got to think of it as a multi-year type of thing for you to really learn. The first year you're, you're learning, you have some modest goals, and then you can, you can build on that year over year. Um, there was a question uh, for you, Alan. Uh, you mentioned you were highlighting other orgs were you saying that these orgs were part of your match strategy or a challenge you were given by them? I guess just some clarity on how you were working with them. Yeah, no, it wasn't part of uh, any kind of fundraising strategy. It was, it was um, just to, to point them out, to, to raise their profile a little bit, to let everybody know that this was uh, a community-wide, you know, Hudson County-wide, of course, but community-wide, uh, in the in the most meaningful way, event that was coming up um, on on that on that whatever it was May thirteenth, um, and and that these these are some of the the organizations that would be participating organizations that hopefully our volunteers would know, right? Uh, because they they come to our events. You know, we have a weekly. We have a weekly event and you know so they know nimbus because their children take lessons there or because they came and did a session with us or because they went to see a performance and um so this is a like a valuable event to participate in uh, right these are familiar organizations that that give to the community you know i think i think it's interesting that you did work like that with other orgs that participated because one one of our goals is that it does build collaboration between participating nonprofits and provides those of you who are doing this work of fundraising and, and fund development, gives you a sort of access to peers who are doing that type of work. And you can, you know, share information, pick each other's brain. Um, yeah. But it is this community wide event. We're all here trying to support each other. Um, so kudos to you for doing that. That's that's incredible. That That's like that warms my heart this well, it's, <laughs> it's great. We're, we're, we're all only a, you know, at most a couple of degrees of separation from each other. I mean, York Street Project and Welcome Home have in common the fact that we were, were, we were two of the um, 
nonprofits involved in dispersing the hardship assistance program uh, funds uh, in you know last uh, this year. Um, I got, I'm not even sure what year we're in anymore, but um, <laughs> you know, and and that was kind of a big deal. You know, we worked with uh, we worked with the city, um, we worked with the um, Jersey City Economic Development Corporation, and in really trying to give back to the community. Um, and um, and so you know, we we all have ties. We have ties that bind, and 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 the Hudson Gives really helps to emphasize that. Excellent, and and. So for those who are also watching, one of the things that Alan has and, and Christine, you know, I know they've participated in the, um, the social media training that we've uh, we've offered. One of the things we're all learning through Hudson Gives is how to tell that story. And so when you can tell a story about your own organization and you are using Instagram and Facebook um, and engaging volunteers to help you amplify that message, it's not that different than asking them to fundraise for you. Uh, it's really a grassroots effort at your organization to A, get your story out, and then B, get people out who can help fundraise for you. Um, and so that's the training that we provide. That's what we're hoping all of you here listening are learning, that you can be a, a, a large organization. And large for us is anyone a million and over. So I know some of you are like, we're not that large. Uh, but for our purposes at Hudson Gives, that's how we divide them. Um, so York Street would be for us a large organization, and then Allen's is a small organization under a million dollars a year operating budget. Um, but both types of organizations can do really, really well with Huts and Gives. There was a question um, as to whether or not the match strategy, the challenge, if all that is on the, the website. If you go to the Hudson Gives uh, website, I would encourage folks to look at the leaderboard and go through the profiles of all the nonprofits you can see the various strategies that they used, whether they had peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers or they had challenges and matches because it would be documented on their page. Um, and I think it's also interesting to see the profiles out there, uh, how they're built. You can see that Allen's for Welcome Home had you know, a number of different uh, donor uh, buckets and they started with the very smallest at like $10. You can even do a $5 donation suggested amount. So. Um, I always think that that's one of the first steps, especially if you're getting to know uh, Hudson Gives, is just go through the site that still has the 2021 results and look at all the um, nonprofits that were there. Um, I want to thank uh, both um, Christine and Alan. We have about, I want to say, 10 minutes. So if you have any uh, questions, can you, um, can you, uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the q and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to think two things at one time. I'm gonna pull up the leaderboard really quickly. Once again, somebody asked um, to do that. This again is the leaderboard. You just go to Hudson Gives and you scroll down. And again, this is the York Street Project page. I click on it. It's gonna pull up their profile page, which is what you get when you register. You can see that their goal was $45,000 and that they raised 156% of that. And they had only three uh, buttons here for donations, but Christine mentioned that their sweet spot was $50, which is right dead center in their page. Um, so they build their own page as do all the other nonprofits. They have a video on. We find that the profile pages here are very, very robust. And then as you go down to the bottom, they had fundraisers and their top peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser was Chris Sullivan, who raised over $10,000 alone. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, here's a little story. So if you look and you'll see that Chris customized his page yep. with his messaging and his, so you'll see right there, if you go up just a smidgen at the end of his letter, he challenged his donors personally with wow. a personal match. Okay. So his match was $5,000, which is really above and beyond. And, you know, I will be truthful. He's, he got to a point, right, where he saw that his donation, you know, he, it was stalling. Oh, and he okay. called me on the day of the event and he said, what's happening? Why, you know, I'm even putting my own money, you know, and all this kind of good stuff. And it really was a matter of contact. 
you know, people, people got the email maybe a day or two ahead or, uh, you know, they, they have all good intentions of doing things, but they really need to be asked more than once. And uh, it really was just a matter of putting that messaging back out there again. And, you know, it's not so comfortable when you're not a, you know, you don't do this for a living. But um, it, I said to him, Chris, on your behalf, I'd be happy to send something or here's a really cool video that you could put out that just tells more about York Street or some of the collateral, like, you know, like Alan was mentioning, like some of those pieces. I gave it to him and he said, oh yeah, I can send him that video. It's yeah. And sure enough, boom, it started rolling again. I do think too, one thing about that day, you know, the energy that gets generated, um, well, it, you could call it competition. And Alan, I agree with you. There's plenty to go around. So it's very healthy. It's really um, engaging and excited, exciting. And so my job that day was to continually let those fundraisers, those individuals that were speaking on our behalf, let them know how great they're doing. Right. Give them, you know, I was giving them regular updates and the website itself, the, the platform, I could in a single email send it to everybody that was a fundraiser and update them with, hey, you guys, we reached this point in our journey. You know, take a take a moment and congratulate yourselves. This is awesome. You're doing a great job. And so by encouraging them they were going out and then asking their peers. And it's that whole networking conversation. It was really, it was really beautiful. It was, it was so nice. And to help people be successful at saying, all right, I've got a goal of $250 and I'm not maybe so comfortable about asking people for money, but I, I'm going to do it because I believe in the mission. And my job was to remind them of that and put the mission up front so that they really could do it. It was great. It was yeah, so and and you know what I'm what I'm hearing too is that um, you do you know I think we it is uncomfortable to ask for money, but the more you do it, the better you get at it, the less uncomfortable it becomes. And you do have to ask multiple times. I had to ask a niece of mine to make a donation like five times. I had to text her. I had to call her. Really? This is a niece of mine. So. Um, I was a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser for Women Rising. I'm on their board. They just made their entire board peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, and I got competitive. I was like, I've got to get to $1,000. So I'm texting my niece. I, I ran after her for five days, um, and it was for like a $10 donation, but I had to do it. Um, so um, these are powerful tools, and so I just want to reiterate, it's about you know, start start thinking about it now. It's not a ton of work to just at least start thinking about it. Get on the Hudson Gives website, look at some of your peers and what they did last year. Um, think about your story and how you might start to tell it. Think about one or two social media platforms you want to do that on. And think about who you can engage in this fun, beautiful, like Christine said, event to help you raise money next year. Um, to this end, I'm going to uh, pull up some of the important dates um so here they are one of the questions was what is what what are the registration fees let me first say that um next year registration is going to open on monday january 24th we've typically always opened on the last monday in january this is the monday after the mlk holiday um registration is going to stay open until friday april 8. every year i say i'm not gonna i'm not gonna have any exceptions I mean it this year. I absolutely mean it. And here's why. Last year, I must have let in maybe five to six nonprofits after the deadline. And unfortunately, they have a lot of questions when they when they sign up late. And that unfortunately takes my focus away from serving and providing service to those who, who did the right thing and were able to sign up on time. So I really am going to ask everyone, if you know another nonprofit who might be interested, please encourage them to get on our email list by sending me an email at foundation at hudsonchamber.org. We're going to start sending out reminders in January about the upcoming registration opening. And we send out weekly reminders and other email tips throughout the campaign. So every week you'll get an email letting you know what's going on with Hudson Gives once you register. 
but you've got to register. There is a fee. The fee starts at, oh gosh, I think it's $50 for a small nonprofit that's also a member of the chamber. It's $100 for a large nonprofit that's a member of the chamber. It's $100 for a small non-member nonprofit, and it's $200 for a large non-member nonprofit. Our members do get a discount because they've made an investment in the chamber, so we, we always give them discounts. The fees are not crazy, though, because as I mentioned, if you do the work and you raise money, um, you know we find that the, the monetary fees are not exorbitant for nonprofits to participate. Um, February and March, we'll be having our social media fundraising boot camps. I know that the steering committee is working on that. Um, and they're having conversation this year about what level of fundraising uh, uh, training to do, both very basic and then maybe some um, intermediate for those who are a little bit more advanced at this point. Um, March, we will have webinars with GiveGab. GiveGab is the technology partner that provides our platform, and they are the experts on peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and matching gifts and how to use the website for both of those features. Um, as I mentioned, April 8, registration will close. Uh, that will give everyone who is registered a whole month to really get ready for Hudson Gives. Get your profile page up, get your volunteers in place, get your messaging together. Uh, April 15 is when I hope, this is an aspirational uh, goal for the uh, announcing the prize pool opportunities. So that's another opportunity for you to think about how do I work in a prize pool into my communications and messaging. Uh, we will be having, I'm very confident in in-person, finally, we can get back to an in-person kickoff breakfast. And I'm, I'm kind of throwing this date out there, Friday, April 29, which is before the site will open. The big day, the big, big day, this is the big day right here. It's Thursday, May 12th. And I know it's 12 o'clock now, so I want to I wanna hurry up here. Um, there was a question as to, is it only a 24 hour? The big day is the 24 hour day that happens on May 12th, but we do open the site early for donations. This year, we're going to open the site on May 3rd, and we're going to keep it open through 5 p.m. on May 18, which is the Wednesday after. Uh, and we do find that about 10% of the funds are raised before the big day and after the big day. So 10% on each side. So that's also something to think about. How do I use sort of the soft phase and the end phase of this campaign in my fundraising strategy? And we can talk more about that um, as we, we will do other um, information sessions. So any other questions? Uh, you can start creating your pages once you've registered. And um, you will, if you've, if you've been a Hudson Gives uh, nonprofit before, uh, your page from last year will be there and you can update it, is my understanding. I believe that's what I did last year. It sort of copies your previous page and then um, allows you to build on that and change it. But that happens once you've registered. Uh, and I will just say when you register, you know, you want to put in uh, register with the person who's going to really manage your campaign. That's just the easiest way to do it. Have someone who's actually going to manage your campaign um, do that. I'm not sure what's being typed into the uh, Nicole amount of awards. Um, yeah, as mentioned, the prize pool that we announced in April, uh, the prizes typically range from a minimum of $250 to I think the top prizes last year were $500. And then we have a match minute. But again, um, I am just gonna tell our steering committee that helps me manage the event that we have $25,000 in the prize pool. They're gonna make recommendations on how to use the prize pool money. And then we'll, we'll negotiate and come to a final uh, uh, understanding uh, and announce that in April. Um, Christine's on the steering committee. Uh, Jennifer Hughes from Learning Community Charter School is on that committee, and Robinson Holloway is also on the community uh, committee. Uh, Robinson and uh, Jennifer are the co-chairs. Christine is new to the committee. It's a very strong committee. I really love working with them. I've kind of stepped back in my role uh, on the committee, and I'm really going to let them fly with it this year a lot more. Um, 
so that I can do more fundraising and get that prize pool raised for all of you. So any more questions? What are chamber membership dues for a small nonprofit? Um, it would literally be like, I think $250. And I think that's the, the least amount that we ever charge for a membership. Um, so with that, you would save $50 on your registration fee for Hudson Gives. So that means, you know, that's, that's kind of a nice savings. Um, and then you get all the other chamber discounts as well. So if that's something you want to learn about, just email me uh, anytime. All right, any other questions? Again, you can please uh, email me at foundation at hudsonchamber.org or mneavis at hudsonchamber.org. They both go to my email. Any questions? Again, uh, if you know somebody who wants to be on the mail list, please let us know. I'm gonna stop this recording right now and then um, we'll be able to send this out as well. I wanna again, thank Christine and Alan. Uh, are both of you going to be, you're gonna be doing obviously, obviously you Christine will be doing Hudson Gives again. Alan, you're gonna be doing Hudson Gives again? Absolutely, yeah. All right, all right, all right. I'm excited right. to see uh, what you all continue to do. And I know we talked today a lot about the numbers, but I wanna, I wanna say that both Christine and Alan have reiterated that it's also about engaging community. It's about finding new donors. I like to say that if you find a thousand new donors and each of them just gives you $5, that's huge, you know? And because in years to come, you can hopefully uh, translate those donors into even giving you more support. So it, it will grow year after year. You just have to have to take the plunge that first year. So thank you everybody. Hey, Maria, just thank remember you. also, people give as much to the individual as they do to the cause. So by really engaging those peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, it's, it's basically a way of people uh, saying, look, I believe in you, I believe in your mission, but I also, I'm giving because I know Alan and I know Maria and I know Chris and everybody that's on there is doing good work. And it's, it's really important that that is really what people uh, will make. They might come for you, but they'll stay for the mission. And certainly what's happening here in the chamber and, you know, all of Hudson Gives is really, it's, it should be wildly commended for the great success that it's bringing, not just to us as nonprofits, but to all of Hudson County. It's really yeah, great. Absolutely. I think it says something about our community that we, we live in a community that cares and who doesn't want to support that. So mm -hmm. again, thank you. Happy Friday, everybody. We'll see you soon on another uh, Hudson Gives info session. Bye. Bye-bye.